Expeditions podcast. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Inner Expeditions podcast. This is season two, episode 11. My name's Aaron Harvey. Welcome back. If you've listened before and you're tuning back in, if this is your first time tuning into the show, welcome. It's great to have you on board. We've got a great episode this week. Uh, I'm joined by Michelle Hooper, who is an ultra runner. She's an amateur ultra runner. She does have a few sponsorships on the go, and she is a great ambassador for the sport, which you will see why as we get into the conversation. Um, Michelle started running only really a few years ago as she came out of having two young girls, and she just wanted to start something to... I guess break out of that that parenthood bubble and get her get start getting a bit of herself and her life back on track. So she started uh, the park run and then that kind of snowballed into her falling in love with the ultra running scene and you will hear about some of the amazing missions that she's done, competition and out of competition, things that she's just done personally for her own I guess satisfaction and looking at that sort of self discovery and finding out the hows and whys that makes you do it and what you get out of running these crazy long distances. So hope you enjoy it. There's a cool other few curveballs in there that are all involved with being a mum and a female runner, which we will discuss a little bit as well. That's sort of things that I never really sort of thought about as a male runner, but, um, you know, exposing yourself out there in the wilderness um, adds a whole other aspect on um, safety sometimes in this sport that we really enjoy that gets us outside. But listen, sit down, kick back wherever you are. I hope you're ready for a great conversation again. Um, and we're going to get into it right now. All right, Michelle, we're on. How are you? It's good to have you on. How's your day been? Pretty good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no worries. It's uh, I know we've been sort of back when uh, to and froing for a little while since you were up here um, earlier this year or last year. You're up doing some training. Yeah, late last year. Yeah, that would have been nice and warm. I bet. That was beautiful. I want to go back? Yeah, it's cold it and miserable is, uh, now. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people are experiencing that up here at the moment. We're getting uh, we've got a lot of numbers up here this year. It's been very very busy. Yeah, today. I'll get there again. Yeah, it's good. One thing that's good about, I guess, running up the hills in town, up the range, is once you kind of get up into the range, you get that bit of breeze and the views. It's mm. pretty nice to uh, to keep going and spend time out there. Yeah, it was stunning up there. I loved it. Mm. Yeah, it's always good to go for a swim afterwards if you're uh, if you're around the west side and uh, camping on the ocean. It's pretty good to yeah, wash it all off mm. afterwards. Yeah, we stayed at Osprey Bay and that was just amazing yeah that's probably one of the best camping experiences i've ever had so yeah definitely want to get back yeah that's that's actually one of our favorite favorite sites down there and there's some good there's some good little trails from down there too you would have Mm. no doubt found them uh where did we go uh it was the gorge loop that i did i think quite a few times yeah Yeah, that's it mandu yeah Yeah, that was good i think i did it five times over so it was just it was a nice rocky uh sorry riverbed section up and then along the kind of cliff walls back down and then repeat about five times because <laughs> I yeah. think it's only like a couple of Ks from memory. Yeah, I, yeah, I think it's just like a three and a half or four yeah. K loop because you were training up to do to do a big run at that stage too, weren't you? Yeah, I mean like looking back now too, it was like absolutely perfect terrain. So <laughs> the rocky riverbeds, yeah. Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah, because I think you were, you were training up to do the Larapinta Trail, which I want to sort of – Yep touch on a bit later on in the show but um i mean to get us going i mean i know you've probably looking back sort of through when i was doing a bit of research you probably really only picked up running about what four or five years ago mm, that's generous um mm. <laughs> is that right <laughs> yeah i think i'm at about two and a half years now oh really oh wow. yeah okay. it was 2019 yeah december yeah 2019 december uh i did my first park run Okay. So it wasn't even like an ultra, it was my first park Just, yeah, run. fully, yeah, park run, yeah. I mean, that's how it sort of starts. I mean, yeah. Where, what drove that sort of initial starting that, okay, I'm going to give running a go? Was it something you've done yeah. in the past or something you just decided that you would just do to uh, to kickstart something new? Uh, so background on my story, I think, in sport, uh, when I was a teenager, I, I was heavily involved with track and field. I did blaze as a you know kid from about the age of seven. 
um, all the way through to a high school and then uh, in high school kind of found my area, which was uh, the throws events, so javelin, discus, hammer, specifically hammer. And so most of my teenage years was um, training quite heavily, um, yeah, for track and field, national states and so on. I ended up representing uh, my country as a junior in the hammer oh, throw wow. twice. Um, and so... I guess my start as an adult into running is reflected back in that because I've just always had that uh, not so much competitive nature but that drive to to kind of be the best at whatever I'm doing. Right. Uh, I ended up stopping track and field just because I, I honestly believed that I got as far as I could being the size that I was and I didn't want to bulk up anymore. Yeah, because um, yeah, I imagine with that sort of stuff, you'd have to you'd have to get a yeah. bit of size up, up top too. Yeah, well, to I was about stuff. sixty kilos. Funnily enough, hammer hammer throw is all about um, speed and agility. Obviously, strength is a very important component, but uh, speed and agility you'll see it in the top throwers these days. A lot of them are tall, uh, yeah. agile um, Eastern Europeans. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not, it's not kind of what you, you envision, envisage a thrower to be. Um, but yeah, I didn't want to get any bigger. I also came to the point where, um, after doing it so heavily through high school in terms of training and, um, the commitment to that, I just wanted to have kind of a normal life to be honest. Um, and, so I went through my 20s um, and I had my two girls. So I have a six-year-old and a four-year-old and yeah. um, had the both of them and obviously was in the mum bubble as most uh, new parents are. Yeah, totally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so uh, when I was in Perth, when we moved to Perth uh, about three years ago, yeah. four years ago, um, when we moved here, Uh, I was just kind of heavily involved, obviously, with a new baby. And um, when she started to kind of uh, stop breastfeeding, wasn't so much as reliant on me. Um, I just knew that I had to kind of do something for myself again. And the easiest thing for me at the time with two young kids was popping them both into the double stroller and going for a walk. And that turned into going for a run, which then turned into me going, oh, this is park run, okay. And so one Saturday I decided to give it a go um, and then it kind of uh, it fired up that, I guess, competitive drive in me again and that was just the start of the end really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, rest is, uh, the rest is history. You the do, rest you is get history, that bug, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, cool. I mean, talking about the, the whole mum bubble thing, it's – you see it a lot and it's yeah. such a good thing to be able to break that, I guess, and yeah. to get out and to get moving and get yourself, yeah, I feel like you're almost like for, for mums and that you're almost getting a little bit of yourself back, I guess. You yeah. get so much of that time to yeah. to being the mum and, and raising the, the newborns and then it, mm. it must be really good, a good drive to, to sort of break out of that and, um, and finally get, I guess you're getting a bit of yourself back as well, right? Yeah, I think you, yeah, as you said, you lose your sense of self. And um, I think in in that first park run, it was like, oh, this is who I was before having kids. Yeah. And it was just that spark and that memory. And, you know, I came back the next week and wanted to beat my time because that's just uh, my stubborn <laughs> brain in my head telling me yeah. to do that. <laughs> Um, and then, you know, after I think I did three park runs and then I fell down a YouTube hole of ultra running videos somehow and watched, um, where dreams go to die, uh, which is a Gary Robbins film regarding the Barclay marathons. And, (laughs) um, that would have been good. Yeah, no, it's like, I always recommend it to people. It's a great film, but it kind of opened my eyes to the whole, oh, there's this ultra, you know, world and you don't have to be super fast and, you know, you can eat lots and it's more about adventure. Yeah. And so after watching that, I um, 
had a look at what was in the Perth area and after doing, I think, two 5K park runs, I signed myself up for Margaret River Ultra, which is 80Ks, which was five <laughs> months later. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I stupidly look back and chuckle at myself, but, yeah, right. you know, I had the drive and, I don't know, the giddy ambition to do the ultra, which I did in the end and, um, you know, not – not the best way you could in terms of ramping up from zero to 80, but um, yeah. And that kind of uh, wet my feet in terms of ultras. And I just continued to love the, the longer form of racing and now not so much the racing, the longer form of adventure and self-creating adventures and experiences, um, you know, with people around me. Yeah, I, I love that. Yeah, I mean, I can 100% relate to exactly what you're saying because I know with some people, like a park run could turn into a 10K, 12K mm-hmm. half marathon and go down more of the marathon path, which, yeah. you know, it is a lot more speed based. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I was the same. I just kind of just sort of heard of this ultra running thing going on. And I mean, I don't really consider myself an ultra runner even now, but mm. I do love that 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 slower pace where you can you, you know you sort of get more of controlled breathing you can get into a really yep. you know flow state while you're out there and yeah like you say you're just out there adventuring it's just so great mm-hmm. to disappear for two or three hours at a time and yeah. explore your surroundings and yourself um yeah i totally get totally get what you mean there for sure mm, definitely it's about um i think I've come to learn that I'm, I'm still yet to do a marathon or a half marathon. So I get what you mean by jumping to the ultra. Um, but for me, it's the enjoyment. And I think, and this is not saying that marathons aren't fun because for certain people and like, if that's, if that's their type of fun, that's great. But for me, um, I know the way that my mind works. Um, is I'm either in the space of going balls to the wall and it's horrible as in like, uh, you know, trying to get a 5k PB or I'm in the space of immersing and enjoying myself, um, which is more so in that ultra setting. I, and I have a feeling if I was to try to run a marathon, uh, I would feel the need to do the balls to the wall. And I yeah. just know for me, I wouldn't enjoy that. So, which is why I guess I have never actually signed up for one. Um, and I think a big part of, you know, the ultras is the being in nature and totally. immersing myself and having everything simplified in a way. Yeah. Um, I think those are the things that I've come to love about the longer distances. Definitely. No, yeah, no, I can I 100% relate to that. And you know, like I'll, I'll take friends running up here that do either come to visit on holiday that are runners or even people that move to town and, you know, people kind of point them in you know, my direction or friends' directions mm. and we'll take them out for a trail run and I'll always apologise. I say, look, you know, I'm, I'm really slow. Um, <laughs> they come out and want to go flat out <laughs> out of the gate and I say, look, you know, I have to apologise in advance. I'm, I'm quite a slow runner. Uh, but, you know, I'm looking at building my aerobic baseline. So a lot of that is mm. quite slow, patient running as as I build that. Yeah. And you can kind of see them itching to take off. But, you know, I said, look, you know, we get out there and there's wildflowers around and I'm sort of working at the moment on a fair bit of nose breathing work just to get even more out of that, you know, that that yeah. easy breathing, mild state that you can get into with the, yeah. with the slower form running like you were saying and, and some people, once they sort of get into that zone, they're like, man, I totally get why you do this, you know. Yeah. Uh, for some, it's a nice reminder just to slow down and, and yeah, others absolutely. sort of haven't experienced it before. They're like, man, I, I totally get it, you know, what you're on about now. So, mm. yeah, it is really nice. I 100% yeah, agree with you on that one. And just, yeah, being outside in nature as well, it's good for the soul. Yeah. So you you were doing trail running, ultra running, and, you know, you, you've, you've done a few competitions as well, as you were sort of saying, mm-hmm. then moved into not so much competition type stuff, but just more stuff for yourself. And you've done a few of those as well. I mean, that yep. just that would be nice as well, just to, to sort of change your tone from that race um, atmosphere and surroundings and just to sort of being outside on your own too. That would be um, nice as well, hey? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I love the race day atmosphere. Yeah. Um, and having yeah that vibe and the finish line feels and all of that. And whilst I think that's great, I, I certainly also enjoy, um, as I said, just just immersing myself and not having so much stimuli around me when I'm out there. Yeah. Um, so with the the two main adventures that I've done or missions that I've done, which was Cape to Cape and the Lara Pinta Trail. Yeah. Those are more created. Uh, well, Cape to Cape was created because I wanted to get back to the Margaret River Ultra initially um, which was my first ultra and do it properly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also the wall, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, because first time around it was, you know, obviously my first ultra and there are a lot of mis- mistakes you see in hindsight. So I wanted to give it a crack um, properly with a good build and a little bit more experience under my belt. But then COVID came along um, and so that was cancelled and I had been training you know, had a really good block of training. I was like, well, why don't I just give the Cape to Cape a go? Um, I, I've obviously become really familiar with that trail given that I, I was training down there for the race. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it was just, it's just nice for me as well. I think one of my strengths as a person and something I enjoy is um, the planning and preparation and bringing together of people and a mission to bring something from nothing to life. Uh, So doing the Cape to Cape, you know, with my non-crew because they weren't technically crew um, and just organising that and figuring out how I was going to, you know, cover this 135K track and what times I was aiming for and that was all really enjoyable for me, Um, enjoyable for me. I... I think after that, I was like, this is what I want to do. Like I want to see the most beautiful tracks and trails with people that are really important to me and traverse across it in a way that's still pushing myself but that I can immerse myself as well. Yeah, totally. I mean, do you run with music or anything like that? Uh, If I'm running balls to the wall, yes. (laughs) More as a distraction. (laughs) Yeah. Um, but if it's, uh, yeah, generally longer runs, I'm usually with um, Kat, who's my training partner yep. or my partner, or I'm just, you know, I'm just there. So Yeah, in that moment, yeah. I mean, yep. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit of a lone wolf runner and, yeah, people think I'm crazy because I never take music or headphones or any mm. distractions. Like you say, it's all about that immersion, I think, in yep. your environment and it's easier to take yep. that in when you're, when you're just hundred percent giving it every chance to, um, to be absorbed in. So yeah, totally, yeah, totally get that. Um, I mean, I know you've, you with the Cape to Cape. I mean, that mm-hmm. was epic. I think I'd only probably just started following you on the socials about that stage. And I saw that yep. you're doing that. That was really cool. Yeah. And then you did the six peaks thing down on mm-hmm. the South coast in Albany. <laughs> that turned into be a bit of an adventure too, from what I saw. Oh um, yeah. man, <laughs> I have some fond memories of that. Yeah. My training partner Cat won't say the same thing, yeah. but um, I don't know. I don't even know how that came about. Um, oh, it was because so my partner he's in Victoria, and um, we had initially planned on going down to do Stirling Ridge Walk, which I think was then closed because of fires. Yeah. Um, and so I was looking in the area to see what what other things I could do in the area. Um, and obviously, you know, beautiful range. And I was like, well, it said. All of the peaks are quite short, the tracks they're about uh, anywhere from like two to five Ks up and down. So I was like, well, why don't we just try to do six of, the, six of them in a day and see how that goes? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and quite naively because, you know, Perth's flat and I have no mountain legs on me. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I had, again, um, done the big spreadsheet and tried to figure out rough times based on um Strava stats I guess I could find of people that I knew that were similar pace to me Uh, because I I, as you say you're not fast and you're always apologizing I am very much the same I always apologize for the fact that I'm not not a very fast runner which I've come to learn I just need to say thank you for being patient um, for sure with my level of running (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, but yeah, so we we took off down there and um, we did the six peaks. So the aim was to get up to the top of Bluff Knoll, which is our first peak for sunrise, and then get to the sixth peak, which was Toolbrin up for sunset. Yeah. So that was the aim. And we did pretty well. Um, the very last peak, so Toolbrin up is quite technical because you have to go over a boulder field of rocks and I think you know if if Tallbrun up was the first peak or the second or third it would have been okay yeah but by the time we got to the sixth our legs were just shattered and like my legs were shaking just like from going up and down up and down up and down and then we just had this heavy fog come through and um, the sun went down, but me being stubborn as I was like, I'm still going up there. I'm not, didn't come five and a half peaks in a day. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, Kat, who actually told me on the day that she's not a fan of heights, funnily enough, I was like, why didn't you tell me this beforehand? <laughs> <laughs> she stayed put and I continued to the summit. Um, and it was, yeah, it was dark. Sun had gone down and it was quite quite scary and so I called called my partner from the top just I had like one bar of reception just letting him know that we were we were safe um and that we had gotten to the top and and then we had to try to navigate down this boulder field on just absolutely trashed legs uh you know it's raining slippery in the dark and didn't get back to the car until I think like eight o'clock meanwhile my partner's already on the phone to the Sterling Range police officer because he Making hadn't sure. heard from us because it took us two and a half hours to descend. Yeah. I think, oh, I don't know, 3K or something. Just our legs were shot. Yeah. But it was such a fun adventure, like thinking back. Well, I thought it was fun. Cat, yeah. Cat would tell you different. <laughs> well, I mean, you've got so much to take into account with something like that. And, you know, with your own yeah. adventures, I mean, how, I mean how, how long of all up was that in total, your, your trek? Uh, so we started, I think five o'clock and finished yeah. probably 8 PM. So it was okay. near 15 hours or so. Yeah. Cause yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't even know if that, if that's six peaks, I mean, that's not really even a thing, right? That's just something you decided yeah. you're going to create for is, yourself. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's what I did. But the funny thing is. I think I've seen like three or four people do it after I did it. And not to say, you know, they're copying because I'm like, yeah. good on you guys. Like, that's <laughs> awesome. Like I love the fact that if if people hadn't thought of like joining that and challenging themselves, if people have thought now, you know, I want to do that. I want to challenge myself. I think that's yeah. freaking awesome. I've actually had a few people uh, email me for my spreadsheet of the breakdown okay. yeah, um, on the times and that. So, yeah, it's cool to... Yeah. Even just, you know, inspire people to go, oh, yeah, I, I could try that. Because I, I think a lot of the time people don't, it's not that they don't have the belief they can do it, they just don't think that it's even a thing to do. And it's yeah. not until yeah. they see somebody else give it a crack, they're like, oh, yeah, I could do that too. Yeah. You quite often see it out like on a surf break, you might see mm. everyone on everyone on one break and there's a peak over in the distance that no one's sitting on, but as soon as someone paddles out there, a few people might kind of sneak out on yeah. that one as well. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's such a cool thing, like even yeah. um, with the Cape to Cape, um, I think everyone went through like this really uh, hard period with COVID where we didn't have races and that, and then all of a sudden people were attempting the FKTs and yeah. um so I I got the FKT for Cape to Cape knowing in my head, like, as I said, I don't believe I'm a seriously fast runner. Yeah. Um, but I had gotten it. And just to see the progression of people getting out there and doing it solo and unsupported or supported, you know, I, I find that, like, awesome that, you know, seeing other people and even myself because I had seen somebody else do it, uh, you know, is – that match that gets you to go, hmm, yep, yeah. I can do this, and it kind of lights your fire a little bit. Absolutely. Well, I mean, you've got you've got the, I guess the that thought in your mind of of being fit enough and training for it. Yeah. But then you've got the other side of things that you're out there on your own. So yeah. you've got this battle of 
fighting your body to keep going, but then you've also mm-hmm. got that little thing in your head going, okay, am I yeah. going the right way? Like, am I doing this yeah. correctly? So you've kind of almost got this little bit of a fear factor in your head as well because mm. you're like, geez, am I going the right way? Like, am I lost? Yeah. So it's kind of like a double, like two two battles you're fighting at once really, I guess. Yep. I think um, with that fear aspect, even though it sounds horrible in uh, you know long distance running, it's a good distraction. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> if, if you're worried about something, you're not focused focusing on like the pain of your body. Yeah. Um, so with Cape to Cape, I had done a recce run I think three weeks before uh, with Cat, and the aim of it was to do uh, one of the sections I hadn't done and run as much of it through the night. And so we had started at 10 p.m. And um, ran out from, I think it was Gracetown along the rocks and it was just the worst conditions, like absolutely horrible, cold, wet, windy conditions. And then we're out there and then halfway through I think we realised, wow, this is really not great. Like we're out on this trail by ourselves in the dark. Like, Yeah. <laughs> and then we just went into like this panic mode of um, – uh, I think Cat at one point was like, is someone following us? And then like every kangaroo that was in the bush, we were like convinced it was going to come out and attack us. Yeah. <laughs> and I look, yeah, I look back on it now and just I laugh so hard because like logically looking back, you're like, that's just stupid. No one's out on the Cape to Cape at midnight <laughs> like waiting for someone to run by. Yeah. But, yeah, it's that fear is always there, I guess, Um it's you know it's something I've talked to or talked about a little bit in terms of um, trail running and being a female trail running and absolutely ha- yeah. having yeah. Um, ensuring that you take the right steps to make sure that you're safe. So even though like Kat and I were out there by ourselves, like my parents knew exactly where I was running. I had the safety on my phone. Um, I'm pretty sure we had a, an, an EPIRB on us at the time. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, I really try to encourage other female runners, especially if they're in trails by themselves, just to take those precautions. Yeah, definitely. Because it, it on one hand, you know, you're kind of promoting it on social media, but on mm-hmm. the other hand, you're like, well, you yeah. know, I'm kind of telling people where I'm going to be <laughs> on yeah. my own in the middle of the night. Um, yeah, it's quite an exposing thing. So I think it's yeah. Um, yeah, I've it's had a few. Yeah, I've had a few um, messages regarding that on social media, like, yeah. oh, you know, how, you, how do you get out onto trail all the time by yourself, and um, you know, how do you feel about running on trail by yourself or at night time? Because I do quite a few night runs for training. Yeah. Um, and I tried to acknowledge that earlier this year. I think I did a few posts saying, you know, here's the picture. You see you see me in the trails, but, you know, there is a whole lot of work and um, I guess safety that goes on behind the scenes that peop- that I don't really cover yeah. in terms of like what I carry with me, who knows where I am, um, you know, my knowledge of the trails and making sure that um, I'm using common sense, you know, which isn't common, but yeah. common sense regarding heat or, um, you know, weather and so on. So, I, yeah, I've tried to cover that so that people can see both sides. You know, yeah, it's great to see the fun, nice picture out in the trails, but, you know, be safe and play it smart out there as well. Yeah, a lot of work goes into creating that and I think mm. it probably helps make it that bit more enjoyable knowing that you've you've sort of done what you can to make it as safe as possible yeah definitely yeah it's something I never really took into mind for me I mean up here obviously mm. a male. I go running a lot on my own and late but it, we're not heavily populated up here I mean I th- yep. some people always ask me how I go with the dingoes and stuff like that but mm. I've never really seen them and I think I've done a couple of runs on the other side of the range where I have seen them early in the morning but they're never never fussed you know by mm. by me but I never thought on the other side of, of, you know, being a female and running around. And I think a friend sort of mentioned it with Strava and those apps where you can quite easily yeah. share your information. You show that you're doing regular runs in these certain areas. Yep. It's like, you know, you've got to be careful with that stuff. because Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. Um, and I've spoken to quite a few of my male friends, in particular my partner, um, yeah. Marco, who is a filmmaker, about this topic and um, – how, you know, as you said, it's something that um, they've never really had to think about. But, you know, I can can count the amount of times that 
where I've been on my own and I've had, you know, my keys in my hand or I, like I've had a couple of hairy experiences yeah. and that's not to say that's because of trail running, you know, it's, it's just dependent on who's there at the time. And I would say um, if you're running, you know, out on the trail, say where I run John Forrest, the likelihood of something happening out there as opposed to, say, a suburban park is probably yeah. a lot less um, yeah. because, you know, there's there's not as many people and you're more remote. But then same thing, I try to, especially with Strava as well, it's just to have your, um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like your security zone around your house you can set. Yeah. Um, that way people don't know, you know, where you live or where you work. Yeah, well, I mean, effectively, even if you're sharing, you know, your your running trips or your running routes wherever you go, mm. you know, it's going to show where you start and finish. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there must be certain safety um, aspects that can, you know, and yeah, definitely. things you can turn on and off to keep that a bit more, um, a bit more private. Mm, definitely. Yeah, totally. Um, I know, and I think I even saw you. It wasn't long after you Cape to Cape run because that was like that's at like about one hundred and twenty three k's, isn't it? The, the Cape to yeah, Cape or something like that. It's yeah, it's supposed to be, but it, <laughs> yeah. it, it always ends up being way longer when you do when yeah, you do yeah. it. <laughs> well, I know it's a lot of. I've had friends do the Margaret River Ultra. That's a long yeah. part of that trail, and they said they didn't yeah. um, take in account for a lot of the sand as well, which really, yeah. which really cooked them a little bit. Just um, these out the mountains. So, yeah, but. I mean, you kind of talked about that experience coming out of that. Mm-hmm. You were sort of saying along the lines of, you know, you, you enjoyed the running side of it and pushing yourself, but uh, was it the post that you said you didn't really feel like you'd really had that experience of really being totally mm. and utterly worn down and, and pushing through those barriers? Is that kind of yeah. what triggered your thoughts to do the Larapin to trail and just push that extra distance? Yeah. So coming out of the Cape, um, I think because it was my first go at a distance that long, yeah. um, I didn't go balls to the wall with that. And I tried to be reasonable in um, my pacing or how I thought I would pace it. Uh, everything went really well for me on the day. It was horrible conditions, but in terms of my body, everything went really well. I never had hallucinations. And because yeah. it was, it ended up being 25 hours. Yeah, that's incredible. So really I never got to sleep exhaustion. Like I stayed up through the night. But, yeah. you know, most people have stayed up through a night. Yep, you're tired at the end, but it's not. It, it didn't really get me to the point of breaking down or like where I thought that, kind of yeah, where I yeah. thought that I couldn't do it. Um, and so like even, you know, 110Ks, I was still like happily plodding along. Yeah. So when I finished, uh, you know, I was really happy with what I did with the cape. But then, yeah, I was talking to my partner about it. And I was like, you know, I'd really like to push myself further and get to that point of, you know, um, getting completely out of my comfort zone to a space where I have never been before. And I was like, you know, is there anything that's a little bit longer? And so, like, I know we have delirious here. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I've somewhat learned from my mistakes of going from zero to 80 and I wasn't going to go from 120 to 360. <laughs> yeah, not straight away, yeah. Yeah, so I was like, <laughs> is there anything kind of in the middle that, you know, it's a bit longer? Um, and my partner who's done a lot of works on work on trails and um, has a lot of knowledge on trails in Australia, he was like, yeah, well, you know, Lara Pinta. He's like, that's always been on my bucket list as well. So initially it was a dream for the both of us to do the length of it. Um, yep. He he got injured and so he safety ran with me a lot of the way, I think 170K of the way. And, um, and yeah, I did the rest with my other crew, Nick and Marco and Kat. Yeah. And, yeah, we got there in the end. When I say we got there, I mean we got to the point of utterly breaking myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mission think. accomplished, yeah. Yeah. So it was funny because I finished Lara Pinta a couple of months ago now and there was not one, one fibre in my body that had that feeling of we should do more. I was like, yeah. nah, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I, I feel like I got to where I wanted to go. 
Well, I mean, that's like 220 odd kilometres, I think, up there in the Northern Territory, isn't it? Yeah. Like, so it's, some, yeah. so Lara Pinta is the stats of it. The official stats are, I think, 230 Ks with 7,000 metres of elevation. Yeah. Um, but I ended up, I don't, I don't know where I found the extra 30 Ks, but I think I ran like 200 and 60 or something like that wow. <laughs> so um yeah we we ended up definitely ticking that box of getting out of my comfort zone and completely pushing myself yeah yeah I mean because I know I know ultra runners and friends have done Margaret River and like they're mm. happy with that you know they're happy with yep. doing a run finishing it before dark you know mm-hmm. no worries at all but then other people are chasing that 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 breaking down and mm. you know I, I guess you're learning something about yourself from from getting through the other side of that so I mean what yeah. were the takeaways that you got out of that is it something you want to achieve again or now you've done it you're kind of happy with that yeah no I'll never do Lara Pinter again in the sense of end yeah. to end um one because uh I feel like the story's written on that one in my head yeah. the memories are created and I would never want to override or right over the top of what I have already um, done. Yeah. Uh, it was undoubtedly the the hardest thing that I have ever done. I, and I would say by the time, so it took me 76 hours in the end. Yeah. But, you know, I had trained really, really hard for it. And still I think I got to probably about 120 Ks in. And the only reason that I hadn't stopped was because of my stubborn brain. But I remember walking along thinking, so I was at walking, walking by this point because I was in so much pain. My feet were just in so much pain. And I was just thinking like, I've trained so hard for this. And the only thing that's getting me to the end right now is my pain tolerance. And that's it. My tolerance to pain. (laughs) Yeah, right. It wasn't any of the training that I've done, yeah. you know, my ability to run on the trails or, you know, go up mountains or descend safely. It was just my pain tolerance was was what was getting me through and it was horrible. The last 36 hours was just me trudging through the desert, up ridgelines, down ridgelines, through canyons, down creek beds, and it just felt never-ending. And I think what I did get out of it uh, when I did get to breaking point, funnily enough, my first breaking point was about 60 Ks because I had been in the heat of the day, obviously, since the morning we started at sunrise. And then by the time sunset came along, we had been running through the day in in the flats of the desert and it was probably 32, 33 degrees. I was just exhausted. Um, And I think what I came to realize at those breaking points are it's the people around me that are so important. Um, All I wanted in those moments were just, you know, the people that were important to be around me. And obviously my kids weren't there, but it's funny when you do something like that, especially something which is supposed to be solo because essentially I'm running it by myself as in like I'm the only one running it end to end but wholeheartedly that effort that adventure that mission the memories all of that is completely attributed to the people that I was with and the team and there is no way and they beg to differ but in my mind there is no way I would have gotten to the end if they hadn't been there yeah no way at all I would have I would have, I think, gone off the edge of a ridge line or something like that because I was just completely toast and stumbling and hallucinating and sleep deprived. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you got you got it all in. You you got what you were after. Oh yeah, I've, to get I got there. the sleep deprivation. So what was it? Seventy six hours, yeah. and I believe I slept a total of when I say sleep, I mean actually sleeping thirty minutes. I think I had tried to sleep unsuccessfully for about two and a half hours over that period of time. But just when you're going it, I guess your body is revved up, obviously, for that physical activity. It 
it's looking back, it's so naive of me to be able to think that my body is just going to want to settle down for a nap now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. I mean, it's, I, I haven't yet to experience it. There's definitely things I want to start doing later on in yep. my, you know, my line of progression for where I want to be when, when that time sort of allows. Um, and yeah, it's, you know, even I've just sort of done shorter distance runs and you get that bit of pain just right from the center of your legs. It just, just radiates out. Yeah. And, I mean, it hurts like nothing you've ever experienced, but it's almost like a badge of honor. You just, you've earned yeah. it and you just, you just love it. You just embrace that sort of pain, yeah. I guess. But, um, the sleep deprivation and the total, um, absolute just mind numbing stuff that goes on from being awake and then not only just being awake but having to push on through that i mean people yeah. go to different places to get through that but um it's just such a monumental effort just yeah full credit mm-hmm. to you for uh for Thank putting you. for voluntary putting yourself through that yeah, well. right. <laughs> <laughs> i mean i know um your races you know you kind of sign up for a race and i think a lot of them they won't let you back out once you've signed up so you're kind of in there and you have to do yeah. it yeah to out of nowhere just decide that that's what you're going to do and run it with um with no pressure it's um it's a full credit to yourself it's been great to listen and um yeah i just can't um yeah say how good it is to hear stories like that thank you epic so i mean on the back of that i mean what's next have you got (laughs) plans for something in the future or i mean that wasn't that long ago so i I guess you enjoy that and celebrate that for a while but um Mm. is there anything further down the track you kind of got your sights on to to start getting ready for yeah, um, I think I've only just come at being able to come out of a headspace of um, fully acknowledging what I had have done with the Lara Pinta. So when it all happened, which was back in May, and then coming back to, you know, the realities of um, being mum and working, yeah. um, it took me a while just to be able to process what happened and And more the reason why I'm saying this is that I think this is a step that a lot of runners and ultra runners miss out on is that processing and the acknowledgement of the effort that has just occurred and not not just in Larapinta like the actual 230Ks but, you know, the journey of training before that as well. Like that is huge for most people, like the the journey of training to a marathon or an ultra. Um. And I really wanted to make sure that this time that I took the time to acknowledge it and not just fill the fill the space and the void of where training was beforehand, yeah. where it was filling up my life, by automatically just planning another race. Um, so I've really taken time to just find that balance again afterwards. And so it's been three months now and I've had no pressure on me to run, uh, to train. I'm just really wanting that, that drive. Um, yeah. And the want to get out there to come back naturally instead of me forcing it. And I think that's, that's how as an athlete, um, or a runner, you know, whether you're elite or not, and I'm yeah. definitely not elite, that's how you're going to get longevity in this. And that's like, that's what I want. I want to be 80 years old running around totally. on trails or walking yeah. around on trails and still have that love for it and that passion to get out there and immerse myself. So at the moment, I haven't been really training and I tried not to think about what's next. Um, I'm just coming to a space now where I've the mind has started to naturally think about, oh, yeah, I'd like to do that. And one of those things is MIU, just because I still feel I have unfinished business there. Yeah. Not so much uh, in terms of um, competing or to get a place or anything like that, but just in my own mind with my own story that I have from MIU. Um, yeah, I have unfinished business there in terms of going into it right and giving it a good crack in a good headspace with a good training block. <laughs> yeah, and, and also having, you know, having that first experience where you're so new to it now going mm. into it with all this knowledge 
yeah. behind you of, of what you've accomplished so far and I guess yeah. seeing, putting that into practice and seeing what, what the difference it makes, I guess. Yeah, definitely. And, like, I just I, – I love – um, Mark River Ultra in terms of um, the vibe and the event and like even when I didn't run it I went down there to volunteer and yeah I, I just love the cape to cape in terms of um, the memories it holds for me yeah um, in my running journey I guess yeah incredible for sure oh, I mean it's just it's great to hear how you're going about it and mm. it's something that's it's a really important message for people to hear and it just makes me so glad that we've, we've managed to have this conversation because, you know, you see a lot on your profile and and everything you post on your socials is super inspiring, but it's, it's great to, to get that bit more of a knowledge out there and to learn not only what makes you tick, but it's a really great Mm -hmm. message for people in the sport to, you know, that's why we do it in the end. It is for that enjoyment. And for me coming from a fair place where I was fairly unfit a few years ago to to improving my fitness and I don't think you're just improving your fitness to compete it's it's improving your fitness for your life as well so absolutely you know I I want to think my life is slowly going to improve as I age not not sort of taper off and just accept that you're in these ruts and you know some stage down the track you're just going to have to you know get on the medication train and um and accept (laughs) it I mean I don't I don't believe that's you know that that's the way to go I want to yeah improve and and give yeah. myself every chance to to have a, a meaningful life, um, yeah, well on into my, my later years as well. So, yeah, definitely, that's the yeah. goal is to um, have the longevity in life to be able to, I guess, continue adventuring and be healthy as long as possible. Yeah, and, some sustainability. You know, as long as I'm making those memories and able to do so. Um, I will. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think you, you, you're going about it the right way. It's been, um, it's, like I said, it's been great to chat and to hear that side of it. And um, mm. I'm just so glad I got managed to uh, have a chat and we'll be able to share this one. I mean, how, how does it go with you, with your two girls? Are, you, are they getting out there and exploring a little bit with <laughs> now? They're sort of getting a, a bit older. Yeah, they are. Um, my littlest is four. Yeah. So up until now, it, you know she'll she'll go out on trails but you know her little legs don't go that far but yeah they wanted to climb a mountain last weekend so you know I went to the closest mountain which that we have here in Perth which is not very high anyway um down at Bell's Rapids and yeah let my six-year-old lead and you know my four-year-old behind her and proud mama kind of behind going oh my god they're doing this can't Absolutely. believe they're doing this <laughs> <laughs> it's a proud oh god, moment yeah, yeah. Oh, totally uh, I was so happy when you know I got home I was just total proud mum and yeah. the thing was you know it wasn't me pushing them out there no. I just want them to do it because they want to get out there so you know was, I was super proud that they wanted to get out in nature and go on an adventure like mummy so <laughs> it was super sure. cute it's great. And um, I think there's something you can learn about being amongst nature. Yeah. It just does something to your soul and um, it can help, you know, build great people. Yeah, and definitely. I'm kind of going through, I've got two girls exactly the same age as yours and I love to take them out and about and do what I do just to give them some confidence to take into as they mature and grow up and become young yeah. people. And, but sometimes I'm thinking, am I just, <laughs> am I doing this a bit too much? Like, pushing yeah. it on the girls or I'm trying to make the girls resilient you know I mean sometimes they might fall over and hurt themselves but they'll get up and keep going and um yeah you know I I'm think, like, no, um, girls can do it too <laughs> oh hell yeah yeah um so my proud. partner's got two girls as well yeah. and we went um there we go Victorian Alps over Christmas time so they're yeah. 11 and 13 and they were carrying so we basically camped out so we hiked 10ks on the most glorious trail like when I say mountains these were proper mountains yeah yeah (laughs) something we don't have over here yeah no like it was uh, I was in awe the whole time and um you know we had you know big packs on our back carrying our tents and sleeping bags and all of our gear out um and you know even just to see those two um Chris's kids just you know smashing it and you know being doubtful of whether they could do it and then getting there and being super proud of themselves and you know that's all the stuff um 
you know, you can't buy, you don't see on TV. That's, that's, right. that's what you, you have to get out and you have to experience it. And, and I think, you know, those experiences as a kid stay with you forever. Even if you go through a period of losing yourself through whatever teenage years or through your 20s, I, I think it always comes back in the end. You have that itch to get back into nature and, and I always remember like my times outdoors as a kid. So I, I think it's super important to get kids out these days. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just saw, you know, they, they were sort of out walking and they, they didn't really feel like it at the time. And then I took them up one of my running trails and we found all the wildflowers and then yeah, they found some cool jumps and they wanted to start jumping off. And the next thing you know, we'd been out there for half an hour. And an yeah, hour, and exactly. Like the best time ever. So Yeah, yeah those memories great. won't go either. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. They'll and, stick. Um, yeah, occasionally I'll, you know, they, they might come for a run with me if I've got home and they'll still got my runners on or take them yep. up the tracks and around the block and they just have the best time. So uh, it's just instilling that that into them that, you know, they can do anything they, they want to do and it doesn't matter if they're a, a girl or a boy. Um, You know, yep. you look at someone like Courtney DeWald or what she's doing at the moment. It's just, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's amazing. And so, yeah, it's pretty great that they're going to have some amazing role models to look up to as they uh, mm, grow into young people as well. Yeah. Definitely. Cool. Well, hey, I think um, I just want to thank you for your time. Um, I don't want to keep you for too much longer on your Saturday, <laughs> but, um, yeah, really stoked to got you on. Um, sometimes, you know, you kind of work out your topics once you start talking and this one's just been such a super um, conversation. Um, it's just been great to hear what sort of makes you tick mm. um, and why you do it and um, I think you're just such a great ambassador for the sport mm, that we love. You. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> I know you're an ambassador for Running Mums Australia, which is an amazing yeah. page and they've got a great podcast as well. Um, yeah. You can totally yeah. see see why. And, um, yeah, it's been great chatting and, um, yeah, I look, really look forward to um, to what's ahead for you. But, um, yeah, it's been great. Thank you for having me. No worries. And now do you – I know you've got a few of the socials that you, you get around on. Um, what's, do you share any of your stuff with you running and that with, if people want to check out what you're doing? Yeah, sure. Um, I really only live on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah. I try to simplify. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, I don't. So yeah, my Facebook. um, I think I wouldn't even know what my page name is called, but I think it's Mish underscore or dot Hooper. Yep, Mish underscore um, Hooper. I've got. Yeah, yeah, and so that's just gen- my general uh, adventures around when I'm training, where I'm going, what I'm doing. Um, and yeah, I just try to keep it all fairly light and positive yeah. on there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's, it is yeah. definitely good to watch and uh, and to see what you've been up to. And, and even when you're out doing these adventures, the live updates are really cool. And um, yeah, yeah, it's pretty rad to see what goes on. But um, yeah, hey, look, thanks again. Um, it's been such a great convo. Um, you know, I, I love the fact that I, with all the great guests we have, I know even get a lot out of uh, of these conversations. And um, mm-hmm. Like I say, even that mindset and the reasons why you do it and allowing yourself time to celebrate and enjoy and let that process go full um, full 360, I guess, is um, yeah, definitely. That's a really rad way to um, to look at it and um, I hope a lot more people sort of take that in mind and use that in their sort of running or their, their journey in general. So thank you so much again. No, you're welcome. Cool. All right. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll look forward to seeing what is up ahead. But for now, we're going to wrap this one up. Thank you so much, Mish. And uh, yeah, we'll speak again. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. How did you feel about that one? I really enjoyed it. And I mean, there was just so many things that just Michelle was sort of bringing up, which resonated with the same reasons for why I run and I'm sure it's like that for a lot of other people too is just getting out there and immersing yourself in nature and surrounding yourself with great scenery and keeping yourself going and motivated it's just so many great messages in that episode taking away from that I mean I just loved the thoughts they're talking about obviously yeah, being amongst nature and allowing yourself every chance to take that on board, but also that sense of adventure and that drive to just get out there and spend some time outdoors, um, you know, out of the race scene. I know a lot of people love the race scene, but I guess in the last 18 months with COVID, it's given the people probably a bit of a chance to have a break from that. And there's been a lot of around the world, even the, the, the sort of elite athletes, I go guess, having a go at fastest known times and FKTs of trails and stuff like that. So 
really cool to hear other people doing that as well, learning about themselves and just getting more out of themselves from that experience without, um, I guess, without the, the pressure of the race scenario and things like that. So, yeah, really cool to hear about that as well. Um, what I also really liked at the end was sort of Michelle was mentioning was just the fact of once she'd completed and that that adventure was over was just allowing herself time to, I guess, decompress, fully let that, that moment pass and then give herself enough time to reflect on that fully and get it all of the lessons I guess that she wanted out of that and giving yourself time to go over I no doubt there would be rerunning that whole trail run in her mind of the Lara Pinta and where she were at certain times of that run and what it meant and how she felt that was just really cool to hear that as well so some cool lessons in there as always there's some great takeaways for me to get out of that as well and as well as all of those points being safe out there you know there's so much about what we do in the sport that we love but it's also keeping yourself safe Um, not just for females out there running but also for the guys making sure you're taking that water you're slowing down in the heat and you're not pushing yourself unnecessarily man at the end of the day you're out there and you're loving it and for me that's kind of all that's enough for me so but um, I make sure that wherever I go I do it safely I do have my phone on me at all times, my GPS warnings and stuff like that, so my family knows that if anything happens to me, uh, that I'm safe out there as well. So, um, look, I think that's a good one. We're going to wrap it up right there. Thank you so much again, everyone, for joining in. Don't forget, you can check out the show. All the links are on my Instagram page. You can click on the link on there, and that will give you my link tree for all of the accounts if you want to listen to through the website or any app. You can also get onto patreon.com. If you want to make a contribution to the show, it is always much appreciated. Just go to patreon.com forward slash inner expeditions. Other than that, I'm going to sign off. Mm-hmm.